What's up, everybody? I hope everyone is doing absolutely amazing, feeling great, looking good, and walking around with a big old smile on your face. Mm -hmm. I'm your girl, Cooking with Tammy, and today I'm going to show you how I make my delicious Salisbury steak. When I tell you this recipe is absolutely everything, it is so delicious, and most importantly, what do I always say? Quick and easy to put together. So with all of that being said, let's head on over to the kitchen and get to cooking. To make our delicious Salisbury steak, we're going to need some ground beef. Yes. Got to have the ground beef on deck. We're also going to need some onion powder, as well as garlic powder, dried oregano, Dijon mustard, ketchup, panko breadcrumbs. Yes, it's a little different from the ordinary breadcrumbs. We're also going to need some mushrooms. Doesn't matter if it's portobello. Saramini mushrooms really doesn't matter. Just have some mushrooms on deck, as well as an egg, beef broth, some more ketchup. I had to explain later. Butter all-purpose flour, Worcestershire sauce, oil, salt, and ground black pepper. So with all of that being said, let's get to cooking. To this wonderful ground beef right here, we are gonna start off with adding our ingredients to the bowl. We're gonna start off with adding some salt. Now let's be mindful that we're gonna be making a saucy sauce later. So at that point in time, you can always add additional salt if necessary. We're also going to hit it off with some freshly cracked ground black pepper. Our onion powder. As well as garlic powder, or should I say granulated. It's a difference. Dried oregano. Add that oregano. It's going to definitely brighten up the flavors a bit. We're also going to add some Dijon mustard. Scoop it on out. Get it into the bowl. Let's make it happen along with some ketchup. I know these ingredients might seem kind of weird, but trust me, everything is gonna tie together perfectly. Get that ketchup on into the bowl. We also have an egg that we're gonna lightly beat. Why do we need to beat the egg and not just toss it in the same way we tossed in all of the dry ingredients? Because it's gonna make it easier when it comes down to the incorporating process. To that, we're also gonna add our breadcrumbs. Now these are panko breadcrumbs. What's the difference between regular breadcrumbs and panko? The texture of the breading. That's it. We're going to get in there with our trusty hands and get to mixing and get to incorporating. Now here's the thing. We only want to incorporate or mix the ingredients up with the meat. We don't want to over mix it because if we do, the texture of the meat is going to change and you're going to have a tough burger and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for nice, mouth-watering Salisbury steak, all right? Melt-in-your-mouth effect. Nothing less than that. What we're going to do is we're going to break the meat into, let's say, equal parts. We're going to separate it on up, place it into our hands, roll it into a ball, sort of like a baseball. Roll it, roll it, roll it, mold it, shape it, <laughs> formulate it. <laughs> Come on guys, get to rolling, let's get it. We're gonna take our hands and we're gonna smash it on down, mold the sides, and we have the perfect shaped patty. Yes, we do. We're gonna place it along the side, get another piece of meat, Roll it in the palm of our hands once again. Take those fingers, cup it along the sides. Yep, just like that. Shape it into the perfect patty. It's time to head on over to the stove top. Now, because I'm using a leaner cut of meat, we are gonna add a little bit of oil to this cast iron skillet. When the pan becomes nice and hot, we're gonna add our patties. And we're rocking out with medium-high heat. If you're using beef with a higher fat content, no worries whatsoever. You don't need to add any oil. Usually, how do you find the fat content? It usually says it on the label of the package. So if you got 20% fat or the 30% fat or however much fat, you don't need to add any oil. 
what's going to happen is once everything starts to break down, you're going to have a sufficient amount of oil in the pan. And in your case, you're going to have to discard that oil before we move on to the second process. It's about that time. It's been about, let's see, about five minutes so far. We're going to check on these patties and we're going to flip them over. And as you can see, this is perfect. We're going to allow the other side to brown as well. I know the last time we left off, the patties were literally laying flat in the pan. However, you come back and they're standing up. That's all right. Along the sides of the meat was raw, so I wanted to get the sides cooked. Now here's the thing, if your meat is not cooked 100%, no worries whatsoever, because what? Like I said, we're gonna be making that saucy sauce and we're gonna add our meat into the pan. And at that point in time, everything will be cooked through at 100%. Now that our burgers are finally fried on up, we're gonna remove it from the pan. At this point in time, if you have a lot of oil in the pan, now would be the best time to drain it on off. Or if you have a lot of bits in the pan, get a paper towel just like I'm doing, remove some of the excess bits from the pan. In my case, because I don't have any oil content going on in this pan, I'm gonna add some oil. Get that spatula, spread it all around. We're gonna add our butter. The pan is hot, so it's gonna take the butter no time whatsoever to get nice and melted. Now that our butter is finally melted, we're gonna add our all-purpose flour. Mix it on in there, mix it on in there. Incorporate the butter with the flour, and it's important to allow the flour enough time to cook all the way through because you don't want to taste the flour in your gravy. That is definitely a turnoff, all right? So you wanna allow the flour enough time to do what it do. Get that floury taste cooked on out of here. You know how to hear floury taste. We're gonna go in and we're gonna add our beef broth. Now here's the thing, if you don't have any beef broth, beef stock on hand, no worries. If you have a bouillon cube or even let's say some beef bouillon powder, add some water to that bad boy, get to mixing and boom, there goes your beef broth. After we've added it to the pan, we're gonna incorporate both the beef broth with our mixture. Stir it on in, stir it on in, and trust me, in a matter of seconds, because we added that flour, it's gonna work as a thickening agent. Our saucy sauce is gonna become nice, thick, and rich. Our sauce is starting to simmer. We have that bubble action taking place. And we're gonna go in and add our Worcestershire sauce, along with our ketchup. Yes, that's why we had double ketchup on hand. One for the meat and one for the sauce. Get the stirring, get the mixing. And I know you guys can see the sauce is already starting to thicken up. And I know we can all agree that the sauce is starting to look good. So at this point in time, now that the sauce is slightly thickened as well, we're gonna add our mushrooms. Yes, oh my goodness. It seems like you've added so much mushrooms and you only have four patties. Well, let me tell you son. just like collard greens and spinach, the mushrooms are gonna break down and for those of us who love mushrooms, this may not even be enough because once that process starts to take place, it's gonna break down. Yes, it is. At this point in time, we're gonna add our patties back to the skillet. We're gonna spoon on some of that luscious gravy onto the patties, just like that along with some of those beautiful mushrooms. Spoon it on and make it look good. Lower our flame to be on a low to low medium heat. Cover it on down with a lid. Allow that steam to soften the meat even more and allow the infusion to take place. We want all of that rich tasting gravy to literally soak into our patties, all right? So cover it on down, let it do what it do. In the meanwhile, we're gonna work on making some mashed potatoes. I've went ahead and boiled some Yukon Gold potatoes, which I've already added to this bowl right here. And once they're boiled perfectly, trust me, they break down with no problem whatsoever. 
First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some salt as well as ground black pepper. Along with some cream cheese. Yeah, we're gonna add the creamy cheese. We want our mashed potatoes to have that creamy, melt in your mouth, whipped taste. And we're also gonna add some heavy cream. Start off with adding a small amount of heavy cream only because it's liquid and you don't wanna end up with a mushy mess, all right? You wanna have a little bit of texture to your uh, mashed potatoes. So start off with a little bit, find out whether or not if the consistency is perfect for you, make sure the taste is on point. If not, at that point in time, then you're gonna add a little bit more heavy cream or let's say salt, ground black pepper, cream cheese, whatever. And that is it, our potatoes are done. And I can guarantee you they taste so delicious. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, our Salisbury steak should be done as well. We're gonna take it on out and we're gonna place our Salisbury steak onto our perfectly whipped mashed potatoes. We're gonna allow some of that gravy to drip down onto the potatoes. Our potatoes are perfectly whipped. The texture of the gravy is rich. Not to mention, look at our Salisbury steak. At this point in time, we're just gonna take it all in. In my opinion, this makes the perfect weeknight or even weekend, I'm ready to get out of the kitchen, dinner. So quick and easy to put together using basic ingredients. And with all of that being said, guys, definitely make you some Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes. As always, I'm your girl cooking with Tammy. Don't forget to hit me up in the comments section. Let me know how your Salisbury steak turned out. And I will catch you guys in another video. Talk to you later. Bye, guys.